Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. My name is Erica, and together with my mom, Lila, we share our passion for cooking great food, trying interesting teas, and having good times with family and friends. Hold on to your hats as we kick off a new season of cooking and baking at Erica's Tea Room. Stay tuned as we share and make some of our favorite recipes with you live. Feel free to ask us questions in the comment section or email us directly. Stop by our location in downtown Claremont and join us for a high tea experience. We look forward to meeting you and making memories with every cup. Hello and welcome to Erica's Tea Room. I'm Erica Shanoff and this is my mom, Lila. Say hello. Say hello. I'm glad she knew who she was because <laughs> usually she doesn't know who she is. <laughs> it depends what day of the week it is. <laughs> well, welcome. This week we are celebrating Valentine's Day. And what is Valentine's Day all about? But it's love. Love is in the air at Erica's Tea Room. You're not going to sing it? Love is in the air. Every time I look around. She has a full set of voice. Oh, uh, love it. Okay, let's start by telling you what we're going to prepare tonight. So we are going to make a strawberry soup and going to... Why are you looking at me? You Everything is about strawberries tonight. Strawberry dreaming. You know, because strawberry really is the fruit of love. So we're going to start it's with... It's right the, up there next to grapes for wine, but... Strawberry soup, nice and cold, nice and refreshing. Then we're going to do a strawberry panna cotta. And if you think, what is a panna cotta? It is an egg custard, and we're going to put chocolate ganache on top of that. So our play on a chocolate-covered strawberry. And that's our dessert. And in the middle, I'm going to do a strawberry chicken salad over beautiful greens. Which could also make a really, really nice sandwich as well. So three different ways to use strawberries for your Valentine's Day treat table. So I'm gonna start and show you how to make a strawberry soup. I'm just gonna stand here and look cute. Try hard, Erica. <laughs> It'll take a while for that to be accomplished. If you ever go into the frozen section, you could get strawberries, and all you need to do is take some strawberries and defrost them. I'm gonna add some sour cream and some heavy cream. So this is the base of our strawberry soup. It's super easy, but super refreshing and absolutely delicious. Is it super? Yes, it is. It's super fun to make too. Okay, baby. I'm gonna let you open that. Because <laughs> it's super, 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 super. Super deeper. So I'm going to use, I have two cups of our strawberries. I'm gonna put a cup of sour cream. Look at that, Ed. Nice of sour cream. Now, normally she wouldn't be measuring exactly, so you can get a little bit. You can absolutely use your cup and smush it in and get a nice full cup into your mixture. But if you want to eyeball it, about a half to a third of your container. No, it's, it's of, it is definitely a half of a container. That's all that's left of my container, really more than a half. And then you've got some left for some potato chips later. <laughs> She's always, she loves her potato chips. She lo Look at this. You know the difference between a skinny child and a heavy child? Now I'm going to put a cup of heavy cream in. Look how beautiful this is. And that's going to make our soup. So let's put this over there, baby girl. And put my um, heavy cream away. Yes. Yeah. Sour cream away. I'm gonna get now some... we're going to get out our electronics. Our electronics? Yes. Ooh. We've got our electric screwdriver here to... So this is an emulsion blender. You must have seen me use this before. I use it all the time. And all this does is going to push this all together. So any strawberry pieces that I have left is going to be all put into the soup. Really, I want it to be very fine. So you're going to hear a little but in just seconds, we're going to have delicious strawberry soup. Look how pretty. It looks a little like milk of magnesia. <laughs> that again. I'm going to use this just to put the rest of the sour cream into this. But you guys never tasted soup 
like you taste this soup. This is phenomenal. It's so super easy to make, but it's so delicious, so refreshing on a hot day. And the strawberries already has sugar in it, so you don't need any. It's not overly sweet. So you don't need a lot of anything. You know, you don't need any sugar or anything else in this. It's perfect. If you want to add a little bit, you absolutely can, but you really don't have to at all. And one nice thing about preparing this right in a pitcher is that you can easily just pour it into my beautiful cup. You want to get another cup? Oh, I'll get some too. I'm not going to share with you. Look how nice and thick that is. It's almost like a smoothie. And putting it, you couldn't get the same cup. That and, one's thicker. Yeah. So it's almost like a smoothie, but look how thick it is. That's why it is a soup. Now, how I could do this is I could put a dollop of sour cream on top. Or I could do a fresh, a fresh strawberry on the corner. I can do a sprig of mint on this. But look how pretty that is just plain. I'm going to take a taste. You're going to take a taste? I'm going to take a taste, yeah. Mmm, isn't that delicious? It's absolutely fabulous. This is one of my favorite things because it's so refreshing. It's a smoothie or a soup. Serve it in a teacup of any sort, and it's easy to hold. It's beautiful. De decorate it however you like. And don't be afraid to experiment with different add-ons. Add some banana to it. Oh, fresh blueberries. You could do strawberry banana. It is delicious too, but as a soup, I just like the, the strawberry. It's our favorite, and... We love to make this one. So we'll be right back, and we're going to start our strawberry chicken salad. Be back in a minute. Who wants to host their own tea party? I'm Erica, owner of Erica's Tea Room in downtown Claremont, and we are happy to announce our new edition of Mobile Tea Party. What is a mobile tea party, you may ask? Well, it's a tea party that we do all the work and bring everything to you at your location. Your house? your office, your location. You tell us where and we'll show up and we do the work. You enjoy your day while we set everything up and make sure your party is running smoothly. Keep us in mind for your next mobile tea party. We're back here in the Great Floridian Marketplace where Mosaica just got in. Look at what Erica's wearing. Inside out earrings, sterling silver, matching necklaces. We have earrings, necklaces, rings, oh my. And you have to see them, gorgeous new colors, Austrian crystal. Look how beautiful they shine without any lights. Erica loves hers. She made me buy her a second pair, right? Yes, yes. just for me. Just for you? Just for me. But look how gorgeous, solid sterling silver over silver. Come in and see them. Something you're not going to find anywhere else except here in the Great Meridian Marketplace. Come in soon. Hi, we're back and we're getting ready to prepare our strawberry chicken salad. I know you just saw a few commercials. Keep in mind that we are now offering home tea parties, a mobile way to enjoy a tea room experience. Think about any type of evening you'd like to host with friends, whether it be a board game night or a jewelry night, but have a tea party brought to you to enjoy with your friends, and then we can theme it to whatever you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Also, you just saw our introduction to our brand new Mosaic Jewelry Collection. It, I can't even tell you how so gorgeous beautiful. those pieces are. The first time we met the gentleman, we just fell in love with his handmade pieces. And he does each piece by hand in Mexico with sterling silver and Austrian crystals. And Austrian crystals needs no light to sparkle. It just sparkles on its own. Very different than Swarovski. 
but beautiful, beautiful colors. So come into the Great Floridian and look at them, and we have such beautiful pieces to show you. And we'd love to thank you all for tuning in. Some of the people that are joining us this evening. Hi, Paul. Thank you for joining us again. You've been joining us every week. Thank you. Hi, Laura. Laura, I know through the Chamber of Commerce. Hi, Juanita. Uh, Christy, Tiana, Maribel. Thank you all for joining us. There's a whole list of people who are on with us right now watching us live. We really appreciate all the love and support. Remember, if you have any questions about what we're making tonight as we're here live in the kitchen, please just type them in. And then Mary, who's in the background, will tell us what you're asking and we'll answer them while we're here on the... On the show. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> Erica has a vaccinated has been vaccinated with a needle. Yeah, look at her; she's making faces. So I um, took a chicken cutlet and ground it just before. So that's when I have one chicken cutlet ground, and that's going to make a nice big salad. With this, I'm going to tell you, I have two tablespoons of my favorite strawberry. Uh, balsamic vinaigrette and I'm just going to put a little bit in at a time I want to see how much I need and it can have a um, paper towel additionally I'm going to put my spices in and Erica told you but not only if you have questions if you want to have any of these recipes in full I can send them to you after the show so we're going to do that I'm also going to put a nice big tablespoon it's actually two tablespoons of uh, mayo in there and then my trilogy of spices so I have my garlic, onion, and pepper, and look how beautiful that looks. A funny thing is that a lot of people call me for reservations on a day-to-day -day basis. I have a lady coming tomorrow, and a lot of people are allergic to the juice in onions, raw onions, or um, even cooked large pieces of onions. And the funny thing is, is that onion powder doesn't have the same effect on people. So that's why we use spices versus raw onions. onions and things when we're cooking because we have to consider all of those dietary restrictions. So now I want to make this a little special. So you saw me put like the two tablespoons of a strawberry balsamic, a little bit of mayo, and now I use dried strawberries. Look at how nice they look. Now I cut some up. This is the bag it comes in. It's dried strawberries. And I get them in Target. Not that I'm giving Target a big thrill. But half a bag I'm putting in. And then I'll show you how to cut it up. Because I cut these up into smaller pieces. Look how nice that is. Now if you cook this overnight, that'll get very, very soft when it sits in it, um, in the soft... Uh, <laughs> and it sits in the stuff. I'm having a uh, tongue-tied moment. The wonderful but, thing about dried fruit is they do resaturate. That's a really big difference between dried fruit and dehydrated fruit because that's had all of the moisture taken out of it. This has some. And that's why when we're making salads, it's better to make them the day before. Absolutely. Or at least hours before you want to serve it. This way it has time to meld the flavors. And you see, here's the strawberry, a whole strawberry. And I'm just going to cut them in fourths, and that's what I'm going to use. And it's nice and soft. It's not that it's hard. These are see great for making cookies and other things, My too. My scones. Scones. I, yeah, I use these types of strawberries and scones and cakes. If I want to do a strawberry cake, I'll do all the flavoring of the strawberry, and then I'll put some of these into that uh, the mixture, and then it, it cooks up beautifully. And you could throw these on a salad as a different way instead of like cranberries or whatever other fruits you like to have on a salad. So I put a beautiful salad together. I'm just going to mix this in, and then I'm going to put a scoop of this. Can you give me a pretty scooper? A scooper? A scooper duper. Sounds like something to take with you when you walk the dog. No, that's a, a pooper scooper, Erica <laughs> Robin. Again, we want to make this Valentine zish. So you're going to have a little pink coloring from the strawberry, um, the strawberry vinaigrette. And look how beautiful this is going to be. Isn't that pretty? A salad for two. So this is a great low carb option. Also throw this on a croissant or some bread, have it with crackers, add a little bit of a nuttiness if you'd like, or a crunchy noodle. Look how pretty that looks. 
You can even take onion straws and flick it on top. But I just, I think that's just a, such, a, such a pretty thing. And the cucumbers you can always put on your eyes later. Get rid of the little bag. Erica's telling you to put the cucumbers on your eyes to get rid of the bags. She always looks at me when she tells you these kinds of facts. But that's terrible, Erica. <laughs> so why don't you get us some forks and let's try the chicken Absolutely. salad. Absolutely. I'm going to leave that there, and I have plenty left in the bowl for us to try. Now, again, I would have liked these strawberries to sit overnight. I'm going to take a strawberry. Do you have a strawberry? Mm -hmm. But the vinaigrette just gives it a little sweetness. And also a little bit of a tanginess, too. Mmm, very, very good. It almost has a teriyaki flavor from the, um, from the vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. It gives that appeal. But then you also get the fruity bite of the actual dried fruit. And the strawberries, just phenomenal. But again, I would have liked it to stay overnight in there, and so it would have been perfect. And it's got to meld all the things That's together. That's a meld overnight. Like puzzle pieces fitting together. So, we, you know, if you like everything that we do, we do this on a daily basis, Tuesday through Saturday from 11 to 4. We serve, and I would love to cook for you. So come on in. And if you call me a couple of days in advance, I'll make you anything you want. So definitely call for a reservation and let me know when you call me that we'll make this special strawberry chicken salad for you. Or later this week, we're making our tropical chicken salad, which we did way back when on episode two or something um, in our first part of our season. So we're just going to take a quick break. We're going to get everything cleaned up. And then we're going to get ready to make our strawberry panna cotta with a chocolate chocolate ganache. Yes, that's how you say it. The greatest thing about ganache is you could use it over a cake and all kinds of things. And we'll talk about that when we come back. That's why you have your cake and you can eat it too. See you soon. See you in a minute. We're back here in the Great Floridian Marketplace where Mosaica just got in. Look at what Eric is wearing. Inside out earrings, sterling silver, matching necklaces. We have earrings, necklaces, rings, oh my. And you have to see them, gorgeous new colors. Austrian crystal, look how beautiful they shine without any lights. Erica loves hers. She made me buy her a second pair, right? Yes, yes. just for me. Just for you? Just for me. But look how gorgeous, solid sterling silver over silver. Come in and see them. Something you're not gonna find anywhere else except here in the Great Floridian Marketplace. Come in soon. Hello, are you a fan of Erica's Tea Room? Well, get started with our Refer a Friend program. After your 10 friends have brought their cards back, you will receive a free luncheon here at Erica's. For every new friend that comes and visits us, they'll receive a tea pack sampler. Get started today. Pick up your pack at Erica's Tea Room. Stop by and see what our Refer a Friend program is all about. Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. Located in the heart of downtown Claremont, this specialty tea shop offers a traditional high tea experience that can be enjoyed with family and friends. While here, you can choose from over 100 teas from all over the world, and a multitude of teapots are available for purchase. Join us for lunch or choose from one of our special evening events. Call to make a reservation. Erica's Tea Room, making memories with every cup. Welcome back. We're back and we're making strawberry panna cotta. Before we get started, I'd just like to tell you a little bit more about our Refer a Friend program. Our Refer a Friend is a way for our present customers who love everything that we have to offer to tell your friends about coming in and experiencing it for themselves. Pick up a package of Refer a Friend cards anytime we're open here in the store from 10 till 5. Bring back 10 with, oh, have 10 friends bring them back. They get a free tea sample and you get a free lunch on us. So please pick those cards up at your convenience and we'd love to have you refer your friends to us. So again, you pick up a bundle of cards, as many as you want, 10 come back in with your name on it, you get a free lunch. I wasn't clear about that. I don't think she was clear about that. So no, I had to clarify. 
He always tells that everybody that don't work with her mother, but she wouldn't know what to do without me. It's good I have you to think for me. Absolutely, because I am the neck. And I am the head. And I turn the head anyway. So I have to understand, we live our life in movie quotes. So our little reference to uh, my big fat Greek wedding. Yes. I keep on telling her to get married and give me nice big fat Greek babies, but she's not doing that for me. So anyhow, with that said... Let's talk about ganache. Now, it's What's set, ganache with you? What's a ganache? But anyhow, it's not Italian. It's just ganache. Chocolate and <laughs> ganache is heavenly. You could take anything and just put chocolate over it, and it is really, really good. So I'm going to take a half a bag, and I'm using semi-sweet chocolate. Now, you could use white chocolate, and I'm using only half a bag. Can you reseal that for me? So... I'm also using heavy cream. So you take a half, a half a bag of chocolate, a half a bag of heavy cream. You could use white chocolate morsels, you could use milk chocolate, anything you want. I'm gonna take a half a cup of heavy cream and bring it to boil. It's gonna happen really, really quickly because we're using a bigger saucepan. So it's got more room to it has room, calculate. Room to grow. So, Ari, honey, can you put that away for me? Yes. And I'm going to put that up and let it cook. But you, I'll give you a hint. When you put up heavy cream to boil, you have to watch it because it goes from zero to overflow, no matter how much cream is in that pan, in seconds. So, Erica, I'm going to have you watch it. Uh-oh. And then we'll show you how to make chocolate ganache. We're going to make this so milky and clear it's going to be beautiful and in the meantime we're going to make our panna cotta and a panna cotta is an egg custard and i usually do key lime panna cottas but again it's valentine's day and i want to do strawberry panna cottas so i took the same strawberries that i get frozen in the grocery store you could get in a container and it says strawberry uh, frozen strawberries it has a little sugar in it and all I did was use my mixer, my um, emulsion, blender. emulsion blender, and made it pureed. So here it is again. I have one cup of this, and I need two egg yolks. So I'm going to use the one cup. Look how nice and pureed that is. One a cup. And one big difference between a panna cotta and things like a, a flan or a creme brulee is that this is not going to be baked in a water bath, which makes it so much easier to work with. Yeah, it doesn't burn as fast as some of these other custards burn. The egg yolk, I'm going to add to it. Can you get me two eggs? I'll watch that. I'm sorry, baby. Um, two egg yolks we'll put in. And then the secret ingredient one can of sweetened condensed milk one whole can of sweetened condensed milk again the strawberries that i have has a little sugar in it this is the rest of the sweetness so i'm going to get this in could you push that down for me or we'll just get rid of it so I'm going to put this in first, and I'll use the lid to hold this. And then I'm going to add two just yolks, not the whites. Okay, I'm going to put it here so you can see it really nice. And look how it's thick already because that sweet and condensed milk is perfect. Okay, do that, and let's show you how to... Um, look how nice that is. Okay, I'm going to put the egg yolks in here. So let's move this over so you can see how to do this. So when you do an egg yolk, you see how softly I'm doing this? I'm going to use this to put the white in. I actually cracked it all the way around. Look how nice. I'm going to use the cap to grab my yolk and get rid of the whites. And now all that's left is the egg yolk. Okay, let's do that again. Very gentle. Very, very gently. What, honey? This is starting to... Okay, t just watch it for me. Go around until I have the whole cap off of it. Look how easy that is to actually 
take the white off the egg. Look how nice, nice, nice. Just the yolk goes in there. Okay, so that's how easy it is to separate an egg. You could use an egg separator if you'd like to, but I like doing it just with my own hands, my own two hands. And before you put it on, you need to Okay, so I'm going to now, I have my yolks in my bowl, I'm gonna go back and get my heavy cream. Oh boy, is this boiling. Let me show you what that looks like. You see how it has foamed up so much. Now I'm gonna pour this I'm gonna pour this over my chocolate. Oh, oh so sad. So okay. sad will be all. And start mixing immediately so that the chocolate doesn't uh, seize up. So, and go slowly or else you're gonna get it out of the bowl. So I start in the middle and I keep on going. And you see how light it is? Way till you see what chocolate happens. Milk. It looks like chocolate milk right now, but it's going to turn to dark, beautiful chocolate. And I love dark chocolate. I think it's the healthiest for you. It's very good for your heart. Yes, so eat more chocolate. They say dark chocolate is very, very, very good for you. You see how it's turning into beautiful brown luster. So another thing that's good for your heart is wine and, of course, tea. And we're going to be partnering with one of our neighbors to do a wine and tea tasting. And I think we're going to have to throw in some chocolate that evening oh, absolutely. as well. We're going to do a lot of pairings with chocolate and cheese because let me tell you, there's nothing that goes back uh, better with wine and cheese and tea. Than chocolate. Than chocolate. And yeah, that's really good. We're going to do all those pairings and show you what is a good pairing with certain wines and teas. So keep your eyes out for um, some add-on events that we've got coming up, including our wine and tea and tasting night, which we'll be doing small bites, probably um, April or May. So look at that ganache. It is heavenly. Look how pretty that is. Now, if that sits out on your counter for a while, it gets really thick and hard. I can refrigerate it and it'll get thicker and harder but for what I want for the purpose I want I want it to be nice and silky like this now if I took a beautiful cake out of the oven and I just put it on a tray I could just pour this over that cake and it would be out of this world the same things with a cupcake if I took a cupcake in fact I will show you I happen to have a cupcake handy I'll go grab a cupcake you go grab a cupcake while I'm finishing my panna cotta so going back to my panna cotta, all I did was put the egg yolks in, and the yolks are just going to get oop, whipped in here, and then I'm going to put these into small cups and put them in the oven just until the uh, custard forms uh, gets hard, and you have to feel it. It's about 15 minutes, and you'll actually see it come out um, that it's a little hard on top, almost like a crust. So I'm going to put this aside, we're going to put these into cups, and I'm going to bake these. And in the meantime, I happen to have a coconut cupcake here that I could show you how we're going to coat. So we're going to put this into little, pan, uh, little cups in a minute, and I'll show you what that looks like. So now, here's your chocolate ganache. I'm going to take a pretty plate. Where are you going, baby? Oh, okay, you going to do that? No. <laughs> I'm going to take a beautiful plate, so we're going to just put that in there, but we'll do that in a minute. I'm going to take the, all this off, and look how beautiful we're going to make this cupcake. So here I took the paper off, and all I'm going to do is drizzle beautiful ganache over this cupcake. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty, Ari? So Looks gonna, delish to me. So this is a coconut cup, cupcake. We have people coming tomorrow. And I'm, all I'm doing is putting some beautiful chocolate. I mean chocolate and coconut. I have an Almond Joy sitting here. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so that's what that's going to look like. We're going to taste that. We're going to fill up these pans. And in two seconds, I'm going to show you a panna cotta that we're going to put chocolate on and then taste. Be right. Come back in just a minute. Puppies and kittens and mermaids, oh my. Puppies and kittens and mermaids, oh my. Puppies and kittens and mermaids. Llama! No drama llama! It's your llama, mama. It doesn't have a red pajama, but it does have a brother. 
interesting. Pink flamingo, llamas, and some pink flamingos. I need that. And a hedgehog. Hedgehog. I need that one too. How about a parrot? Probably want a parrot? I want a cracker. How are we going to give it a cracker? It's a vegan leather. Well, maybe the octopus can help. Ooh, octopus. I need all of these, Erica. Well, definitely stop by and see us at the Great Florida Marketplace. We now carry chala bags, and we've got lots of different styles for you to enjoy. They might be gone by the time you get here, so hurry up. Come see us soon, Tuesday through Saturday, 10 till 5, here in downtown Claremont. Have you tried any of our evening events? Our theme nights, our painting nights, are all fun, different ways to try a tea experience. Coming up, we have so many things to choose from, from a tote bag painting night, to a murder mystery, to our themes. Try one of those out. You can see our entire calendar on our website and on our Facebook page. Check out the menus, each course paired with a tea, fun activities, and you will love the experience. Here are some of the events that we have coming up. Don't forget to RSVP. We look forward to seeing you soon at Erica's Tea Room. Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. Located in the heart of downtown Claremont, this specialty tea shop a traditional high tea experience that can be enjoyed with family and friends. While here, you can choose from over 100 teas from all over the world and a multitude of teapots are available for purchase. Join us for lunch or choose from one of our special evening events. Call to make a reservation. Erica's Tea Room, making memories with every cup. Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in, Marion and Richard and Lisa. Thank you for joining us each week that we're here live on 7 p.m. on Monday nights. I wanted to just talk a moment about some of our upcoming events that you might have just seen on the commercial. So we are sold out for this weekend for our Valentine's Day high tea and our murder mystery, Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, it's going to be lots of fun. I can't give you any hints, but I'm in the middle of writing it. So there will be a bachelor, and there will be lots of bachelorettes, and we'll see who gets the deadly rose. Later this month, we've got a Fakosha bread making night, which I don't think you saw the flyer for there, but that is next Wednesday the 19th here in the store at 6 p.m. if you're able to join us. Later this month, we've got an Alice in Wonderland evening with just four spots left. How many? Four. Can I see? Four. Erica knows how to count. Next week, we'll teach you the alphabet. I have to learn something new every day. Um, next month, we're kicking off with a scone making night. If you've not joined us for one of those, we've got fabulous mixes that we carry. I preempt by saying they're not my mom's scones. We've shown you how to make those. But if you want something super easy to make with one ingredient, heavy cream, join us for our scone making night on wednesday march the 4th at 6 p.m and they and have new scone mixes they have a pumpkin pie scone they have a chocolate chip scone two new flavors and they have still the blueberry and the cherry and a lot of other good flavors but those are the two new ones and going back to the focaccia bread you got to try this usually it takes you so much to do bread but this is herb and oil olive oil already in the bread you add water you just let it sit in a uh, cast iron pan for an hour then you bake it and it comes out beautiful and with that night so easy even i can do it i doubt that but anyhow that night <laughs> Uh, there's not much you could do, but that night we're going to bring in all these tapenades and we're going to try all of that on the focaccia bread and then I'm going to teach you how to make a margarita pizza. And a tapenade is just a fancy way for saying a spread or a dip. So we'll be uh, sampling that evening our brand new spreads from Italy and we've got eggplant and artichoke and olive and bruschetta and pesto. So come and join us on the 19th and then the scones on March 4th, and sample your heart's content. And I know we said that Motown is sold out. It is not sold out. So if you <laughs> want to come join us, we are going to 
sing the Supreme songs and the Temptation songs. All of the great Motown artists. We're going to the Supremes. Yes. I had her singing yet last night. Stop in the name of love. You should have heard. Yes. We will try not to have her sing, at least not loudly, so you guys could sing over her, and we'll have lots of fun that night. And just saying a shout out to our Stephanie, who's online with us right now. Thank you for tuning in. Hi, Steph. How are you, sweetheart? Most of you know Steph from our other shop, The Great Florida Marketplace, where we carry the Chala bags and the Mosaic of Jewelry. So stop in and say hello to Steph any weekend, Fridays and Saturdays. She's in the store with us. So let's go back to this cupcake because it's calling me. So we What's took it calling it, it's calling me mommy. So we <laughs> I call her mommy too, but I don't get a cupcake out of it. No, and you're not sharing this one with me either if you okay. keep on talking. But anyhow, I took my coconut cupcake and I put out chocolate ganache on it, so it's like an almond joy. I am going to so taste put some slivers of almonds right on top of this before you put it out on your I Valentine's Day table. I can absolutely do that. Oh look how soft. Now a big secret of my cake is I put sour cream in my cake, and you see how light and fluffy it is. Lighter than air. She's definitely not having any of my cupcake. Mmm. I love coconut. <laughs> and did you see how I grab it? But anyhow, here, baby. Very, very good. It's really like an almond joy. <laughs> it's delish. I took this out. This is um, grated pecans we have a lot of people who are gluten-free and they cannot have crusts <clears throat> so traditionally we would make our panna cotta with either a cookie crust or some sort of crust on the bottom graham but crackers but this works very very well all I did is take two tablespoons of butter and I put these grated pecans and I've seen these in I get them in um, Atlanta Georgia. Georgia where they have all the pecans but I've seen these in Publix. It's a big bag. It is crushed pecans. You could actually use this to make any sort of uh, dish. But this is a fabulous way to make a, a lot crust. of different desserts, like little mini pies, and make it gluten free. So it makes it super simple. It gives a nice little um, different taste. texture and taste. So pecans are a great way. Also use that like we did a few weeks ago and uh, use it to make a crust on a salmon. So this is a panna cotta. Right out of the oven. So I did the same pecan crust. You see how thick it is, almost like a gel, but it's, it is a pure custard, strawberry custard. And again, I'm gonna use a spoon. Can you give me a small spoon? Because yes. I really wanna cover this with the chocolate ganache. You do not need to cover it. This by itself is absolutely fabulous. And I already taste tested it because I couldn't wait. But to give it that chocolate-covered strawberry appeal, you what can taste? totally glaze this with the chocolate ganache. Oh, absolutely. Look how beautiful that looks. Now, I would put a, a fresh strawberry on top of this or raspberry, even though it is strawberry. Look how gorgeous that looks. Looks good enough to eat. Are you telling me that for a reason, well, Erica we can't Robin? just stare at it. We can't stare at it? No. Why not? We have to taste test. Okay. Oh, you did already? No, I didn't. I'm waiting. Oh, you're being hey? I'm shocked. Do we have a question? We do. Valerie Reed would like a recap of the strawberry soup. Sure. So, Valerie, we started the evening off by making a very simple, very light and refreshing strawberry soup. Here's what it looks like. It is, um, I, again, I take the frozen strawberries. It has a light syrup in it. Frozen whole strawberries. It comes in a little pint container in the grocery store and I use my emulsion blender and make it to very very thin so there's no pieces in it if you like pieces in it you're welcome to make it gentle then I took a cup of sour cream and a cup of heavy cream and this is for four nice servings maybe five I don't know we always like a little refill that's why I say four the more the merrier and if you uh, want for more people you double it and you just use your emulsion blender to put your heavy cream a cup of heavy so it's two cups of strawberries one cup of sour cream one cup of heavy cream and look how nice and thick and again if you put this in your fridge overnight it is really really thick and then I would top it with a dollop of sour dollop a dollop, 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 dollop of dollop, daisy dollop, 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 
Daisy. And I do like Daisy. I just do. It's just nice, thick sour cream. So I hope that answers your question. Again, we talked about you could put uh, bananas in here, make a strawberry banana soup. I'm going to be making for Valentine's Day a coconut soup. For Saturday night for our tropical menu, Bachelor in Paradise, we're making a cold coconut soup. All the same thing, but then we're using a coconut milk. Using coconut milk. So you could do this with a lot of different ingredients. It, you know, it really is very good. It's nice and, and refreshing rather than a hot soup, especially on our hot days. Something that we always do for Mother's Day each year on our special Mother's Day, extra special Mother's Day menu is a cold soup. And this one we did our very first year we opened seven years ago, 2013. We made the cold strawberry soup and it was a huge success. And now people ask for it. All the time. Um, and we did a, a cold cucumber soup. Now that's a little different because when you use do a cold cucumber soup, you have to cook the cucumber first in a chicken broth. And we'll do that another night. So don't hesitate. If you have any questions, let us know. I know Marion's already requested the recipes for tonight. Remember, type in your email or message me if you don't want to put it out there for the world to see. Message me um, and I will send you tomorrow um the recipes so please now let me cut this open so you can see the middle of this panna cotta what it looks I like i have to make sure she's splitting that half half i'm not splitting it in half but look how beautiful <laughs> that panna cotta is isn't that pretty it's the strawberry all the way through and just that chocolate gives you a little special for valentine's day because everything is strawberry and chocolate so now erica robin Oh, what I do? She's bringing out my uh, middle name. Look how beautiful that is. Mmm, very smooth. What I love about this, and I tasted it before we added the chocolate on top earlier today, the strawberry nectar actually soaks into the pecans at the bottom. Absolutely. And it makes it taste like, like those candy pecans you get at a fair like the cinnamon coated or the toffee coated. So it's like a candy and a one. It's, it, it's so good, you have to try it. But this is a beautiful dessert. Now you can make it heart shaped. If you had a little heart shaped ramekin, you could do it in a heart shaped ramekin. I do the little cups, little white paper cups, as Erica showed you. And the reason why we do it again in those cups is because it cuts down on some of the mess. It makes it a little bit easier to clean up, especially if you're doing this for a party and you need to do a lot of them. And we are. We're doing it for a big party later this week. And I always put those cups in. They peel off beautifully. And it makes the pretty the ridge around the outside of the, um, of the panna cotta. And what makes it a panna cotta? It's just the egg. Now, if I wanted to do something with the egg whites, I could have taken a little of the strawberry juice, only, only about a teaspoon, of the strawberry juice, put it into those egg whites, and put a little cornstarch, about two teaspoons in, and whipped it until it got very, very thick, almost like a marshmallow. You could pipe it out or do a little circle, put it in the oven on a very cool oven, three and a quarter, and you can make a beautiful meringue. So we'll have to do that another night. We wanted to do the chocolate ganache and play on a chocolate covered strawberry for this evening. But normally our panna cottas get topped with a meringue cookie because you have your egg yolks still left over. Your egg whites. Your egg whites still left over. See, and we try not to be wasteful. Yes, I, and you can do that. But I said I wanted to put chocolate on this, so I just got rid of the whites this time. But don't hesitate to try to crack your egg the way I did. Just very softly go around circles. You can separate your egg beautifully that way. Get no shells in. So we want to thank you for coming and joining us this evening. We hope you've gotten a few different ideas for your Valentine's Day table, whether it's just you and your loved one, your mother, your husband, your significant other, or whether you're hosting a Valentine's Day party. Hopefully you've gotten a few different ideas that'll be successful for you. Again, message us if you have any questions, if you'd like the recipes. And come in and join us because I love to cook for you. That's what I did. That's what I do for a living. I'm not chubby for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> No, I love cooking for people. So come in. And if you want us to share any other recipes or try to make something else for you, just let us know and we'll do it. Also, if you have any ideas of what you'd like to see us prepare, let us know that as well. Next Monday, we'll be here at 7 p.m. 
And later this week, if I haven't heard any ideas from anybody else, I'll let you know what we'll be making. We only have a few shows left to finish the season, but I'd love to know what you'd like us to do in the following season because we don't. We could go outside of our tea room box and make some other foods for you. Just let us know. So that reminds me, before I let you go, of course, everything is paired with tea. <laughs> is paired with tea. So tonight, I've got two tea pairings to share with you. Oh, this is beautiful. My first tea is a chocolate covered strawberry. It's called strawberry cupcake actually. And so this one is a black tea with pieces of dried strawberry and cinnamon and cho cocoa nibs. And it exactly tastes like a chocolate covered strawberry. Mm. It smells like a chocolate covered strawberry as well. And if you're joining us on Friday for our special Valentine's Day high tea, that's going to be with your dessert, our chocolate covered strawberry cupcake. Our other tea that I featured tonight with our strawberry theme is our strawberry guava. Look how gorgeous that is. I love the colors. The colors, the um, pieces of lavender and the white tea leaves. So our white tea leaves are huge. You see how beautiful the different pieces. Look at I, I wish I, you can, I wish somebody has to create something that you can smell as you can see. And if anybody amazing. knows about a cooking kitchen that rents out that I can have a live audience, please let us know. If anybody out there hears about a cooking kitchen, because I would I love to... I have an idea about that today, by the way. She had an epiphany. <laughs> I have an epiphany. Uh, but if you know of anything, because I would love to have you come in and me cook for you right in front of you and you taste as I go. So our goal for our last show of this season, which is about three weeks away, is to invite you to come join us at a test kitchen. We don't have the space here in the store to invite all of you into our kitchen because you don't see all the equipment that's set up here. But we'd like to find that kitchen so we can invite you all to come join us and have the interaction one-on-one -on -one as we're recording. And also have you taste because there's nothing. I mean, the look is there, but you need to taste it. It really is very, very tasteful. So we want to say good night. Thank you for joining us. And please stay tuned next week. Thank you so much. Come and see us very soon here at Erica's Tea Room. So. Tuesday through Saturday, 10 till 5 and 11 till 4 in the tea room. Because. And at Erica's Tea Room, we make memories with every cup. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Erica's Tea Room. My name is Erica, and together with my mom, Lila, we share our passion for cooking great food, trying interesting teas, and having good times with family and friends. Hold on to your hats as we kick off a new season of cooking and baking at Erica's Tea Room. Stay tuned as we share and make some of our favorite recipes with you live. Feel free to ask us questions in the comment section or email us directly. Stop by our location in downtown Claremont and join us for a high tea experience. We look forward to meeting you and making memories with every cup.